Hey there, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to today's episode of Economical Dude, Yammy Noob. You read the title. We're talking about seven cheap hacks for beginner riders because unfortunately, whether us riders choose to admit it or not, motorcycles can be kind of expensive. There is the cost of the bike themselves, the never-ending list of unnecessary mods and farkles, and of course, annual gear upgrades should your inner prima dama take control of your purse strings. And while motorcycling can very quickly become an expensive hobby, it doesn't have to completely drain your bank account and leave your net worth shriveled like the uneaten raisins on the bottom of a trail mix bag. So without further ado, let's talk about the seven different ways you can try to save money as a motorcyclist. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Voom Insurance. We actually have an exciting promotion happening with them right now that you are not gonna wanna miss, so make sure to stay tuned and check that out. Now let's get into it. The first cheap hack for the new motorcycle rider should be fairly self-explanatory, but if I've learned anything from years of imparting two-wheeled wisdom onto the minds of younglings around the world, it is even that the obvious cannot be overstated. Best beginner bike? Turbo. Bobusa. I think that's common sense, but it's still got to be reaffirmed every so often. But with that being said, the first way to save money as a new rider is to buy a used motorcycle. There are definitely advantages to purchasing a brand new shiny bike through a dealership. It will be a turnkey experience that will leave you rolling off the lot on a zero mile machine with the full warranty that's already plated and registered through the DMV. But that's really where the benefits of buying at a dealership kind of end. You're gonna pay through the nose for the inflated MSRP plus fees and taxes and God forbid you get suckered into buying some completely unnecessary additional warranty or tire package. Your $6,000 beginner bike will start looking closer to a $10,000 beginner bike pretty darn quickly. Recently, we had a guy at the shop that bought a $5,400 MSRP bike for close to $8,000 out the door. Ouch. Not to mention a brand new bike while pure and unmolested is going to be entirely stock, so you'll need to spend a little bit extra to remove the whale tail with the fender eliminated tail tidy kit and install a slip-on exhaust because let's be honest, stock exhausts usually look pretty ugly and leave a lot to be desired in the acoustics department. Whereas the promised land of Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist is literally chock full of beginner bikes with low mileage that have only seen a season or two of riding. No warranty? Who the hell cares? It's a Z400 with 2,000 miles. Literally nothing can go wrong. And when you're buying a bike for five grand cash, the stakes aren't terribly high. A used bike will already have done the break-in services as well. I mean, hopefully they did. I guess it'll be up to the discretion of you, the purchaser. But there are honestly tons of gems on Craigslist or Marketplace. Beginner bikes with low miles owned by scrupulous nerds who have receipts of every service that's been done to it. A lot of times these bikes already have done tasteful mods as well to sweeten the deal. When buying bigger, more expensive bikes that you may want to finance, it can make a lot of sense to work with the dealership, especially if you can get a good rate. But in this economy, that's not going to happen. So I think buying cash off Craigslist is usually a better bet. But for a beginner bike that doesn't cost much, you'll likely unload after a season or two. Buying used can save you a ton of money. It's not only cheaper to buy a used bike, it's also cheaper to buy a smaller bike. Hey, 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 I know what you're thinking. Small means slow. And look at me, I'm a fast boy. How will I ever gain the approval of the alpha chads in my community on a small bike. Well, this is a cheap hacks list video, not a how to be recognized as a man video. We may make that one later on, but for right now, we're focusing, okay? Smaller bikes are the name of the game. Smaller bikes are, of course, cheaper to purchase, but they're also way cheaper to operate. A smaller motorcycle will be more fuel efficient as well as you put less stress on moving parts. Even if your online therapy sessions have helped you achieve a level of confidence you'd have never thought possible, it may not be the best financial decision to start on a middleweight naked bike like an MT-07 or similar that blurs the line between a beginner and an intermediate motorcycle for certain people. Kind of falls in that beginner plus category that I mentioned sometimes. Smaller bikes often have have way simpler designs, fewer features, and less advanced technology, which contributes to their lower price tags. Smaller motorcycles often have simpler and less complex mechanical systems compared to larger bikes as well. This can make maintenance and repairs easier and less expensive. Additionally, smaller engines generally have fewer components, which can reduce the cost of parts and labor. It also seems that the so-called plastic tax also makes fully fared motorcycles more expensive than their naked counterparts, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Also, naked bikes are easier to work on compared to bikes 
bikes covered in plastic aerodynamic sheathing. Depending on where you live, a smaller bike could be noticeably less expensive to register as well. Smaller, less powerful motorcycles are going to be less expensive to insure, but there are other ways to save on insurance as well. Voom Insurance is changing the game for motorcycle insurance, providing the only pay per mile policy for motorcyclists. Your rate is dependent on miles ridden, making this the perfect option for seasonal riders, multiple bike owners, or weekend warriors who just don't rack up that many miles. By uploading a photo of your odometer once a month, you're insured you only pay for what you need. But we're running a special promotion in partnership with Voom that can earn you a 10% off coupon at yammynoob.co. All you have to do is get your free quote at voom.com slash yammynoob and send a screenshot of your quote to the support at yammynoob.co email address. Once we receive proof of your quote, we'll send you a coupon code for 10% off any purchase on our store at yammynoob.co. That's a pretty good deal. All you gotta do is get a quote, get 10% off, that's awesome. Voom Insurance is available in Texas, Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Wisconsin, Indiana, Alabama, Ohio, Colorado, Oregon, Maryland, Tennessee, and Pennsylvania, which means Voom Insurance is available to 42% of riders in the country. This promotion's only available for one week, so be sure to go over to voom.com slash yammynoob and get your free quote today. We've been so happy to have Voom as a partner here on the channel. It's so awesome to see the way that they're helping make motorcycling more affordable and accessible, which is really what we're all about here on Yammy Noob. So get that quote at voom.com slash yammynoob, send your screenshot to support at yammynoob.co, and enjoy 10% off any purchase at yammynoob.co. Thanks so much for Voom for supporting the video. Now let's talk about some other ways to save money as a motorcyclist. A good way to save money as a motorcyclist is by learning to do your own maintenance. DIY is the name of the game, baby. Motorcycle maintenance, home repairs, haircuts, live birth. There are countless ways that a little bit of elbow grease and a few YouTube videos can have you saving hundreds of dollars at a time by performing these tasks yourself. Motorcycles are honestly quite simple machines, especially if you're on a beginner bike that has pretty rudimentary components. If you invest in a decent assortment of tools early on and spend some time looking through your service manual and watching a YouTube video or two, you'll honestly be pretty well equipped to tackle most pieces of basic and routine maintenance. And if you ever find yourself in a pinch, you can descend into the mouth of badness that are model-specific forum pages where boomers recant every repair or modification in the most meticulous and minute detail. It is truly insane how much specific information is available and easily found on the internet. Need to know the thread size for the foot peg hanger on your 2006 SV650? No problem. I literally found it as quickly as it took to type it in the search bar and hit enter. M8 30 millimeters. See? Easy as that. As a beginner rider, don't go cracking into your engine case or try to install a NOS kit on your Royal Enfield, but actually, no, wait, I changed my mind. Go ahead and install that NOS kit on the Royal Enfield and send me some videos and post it on our Discord. I'd love to see it. But basic maintenance like oil and filter changes, brake pad changes, chain swaps, and fluid flushes can be done with a handful of basic hand tools and a teensy bit of know-how. And if you do your own maintenance yourself and on time, you'll likely need less serious costly repairs later down the road, and you'll save a ton on labor. Another lesson I've always try to impart on new riders is not overspend on modifications to a beginner bike. On a beginner bike, you're going to see massively diminishing returns rather quickly should you go past the tail tidy and slip on exhaust stage. Depending on what type of bike it is and how you ride, there may be room for some other farkles here and there like engine protection or an upgraded brake lever or master cylinder, but please listen to me when I say there is no reason to put a full system exhaust on a 300cc bike to make it make an extra two horsepower. I'm sure you've read the product description like upon installation of these high flow titanium headers, catless midpipe, and unrestricted mufflers. In coordination with the fuel management tuner, you can gain up to 15% in horsepower over stock. But, bro, your bike only makes 35 horsepower to begin with, so is gaining 5 horsepower really worth that much money? I feel like the best mods for beginner mic make it look a little bit better, make it sound a little bit better, and maybe improve your riding experience based on adjusting a touch point. And honestly, you should invest in tires. Just tires and seat time. That's all you need. Gas, tires, and seat time. Do it. So beyond a tail tidy to clean up the rear section, a slip on for style and sound, and maybe an improved seat or grips that alleviate a point of annoyance in an otherwise perfectly suitable bike, just stop there. Don't get caught up in the modification hysteria. It's a dangerous road that only ends up leading to heartbreak and despair. OEM parts distributors hate him. Earn cash back on all motorcycle upgrades with this one simple trick. 
sell your old parts. It might sound too good to be true. You think every used motorcycle I've ever bought comes with a box of random OEM parts that were barely used as the previous owner installed aftermarket parts early in the bike's life, but you'd honestly be surprised at the amount of people looking to buy OEM parts on eBay, especially pieces that would be damaged in a crash, like levers, foot pegs, and even an OEM exhaust pipe. While the sensible person would likely use this as an opportunity to upgrade the stock components should they be damaged in a crash. There are lots of guys who just want to keep their bike stock or want to replace OEM parts with undamaged ones as quickly as possible to avoid any unnecessary attention they may get should they replace them with aftermarket. It's like people will be questioning, why does straight laced Vanilla Joe all of a sudden have an anodized adjustable neon green clutch lever on his otherwise entirely stock Honda? So if you have a huge box of unused OEM parts, don't just pass it off to the next owner of the bike who will then do the same thing when they sell it until all these boxes of unused OEM parts becomes the sole remaining artifacts of human existence when extraterrestrials inherit the earth following our species demise. The only thing left on earth will be roaches, Nokia brick phones, and boxes of OEM motorcycle exhaust pipes. And Instead, try listing those parts for cheap on eBay. You'd be surprised at how many people are actually looking for them. Especially if you have an older, more retro bike who someone may be trying to restore to original factory condition. And the last hack to save a beginner rider money is to just ride modestly, at least in your daily riding. Riding modestly is going to have many cost saving advantages. You're going to put less wear on your bike, which increases the rate at which you go through consumables like tires, brake pads, and even fluids. Riding at a more modest pace will make your bike get better gas mileage. Most motorcycles will get significantly better gas mileage than a car already, but there is a noticeable difference in your MPGs when you kind of just trundle around town at a normal speed versus revving your bike to redline at every single opportunity. If you ride at a modest pace, you'll also be less likely to crash, which will require costly repairs on your bike and you'll also wear out your gear. Remember, helmets are single use items. They're designed to protect your skull from impact once. That's why it's important to not buy a used helmet or wear that free half helmet that came in the box of stock parts you're never gonna use. Obviously, motorcycles are fun and we all like riding fast and pushing a little bit, but remember there is a time and place for such behavior. And if you're able to keep the squidding to a minimum during normal daily riding, you're not only going to be safer for you, but it'll also be save yourself some money in the long run. Just think about the difference between American motorcycling and motorcycling in India or Asia. In other countries overseas, motorcycling truly is an economic and cost-saving form of transportation because they ride small, low-maintenance bikes in dense urban environments, compared to American riders who feel that everything needs to be bigger, faster, and more extreme. So if you're looking for ways to save money on a motorcycle, maybe take a page out of the Asian rider's books and just putz around town lugging your engine in fourth gear 30 miles per hour. A little air-cooled bike can literally run forever when used like a mule in that way. And then when you do ride aggressively, it'll be that much more rewarding. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to subscribe if you have not yet and make sure you check out boom.com slash yammy noob. Get yourself that quote and send the proof to support at yammy noob.co to get yourself that 10% off coupon. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Fact. The world's largest sundial, known as the Samrat Yantra, is located in Jaipur, India. Built in the late 18th century, this massive stone structure stands at 27 meters tall and is designed to accurately tell the time with an impressive precision of about two seconds. It's a remarkable testament to India's historical advancements in astronomy and engineering. Goodbye. <laughs> I just, I can't keep watching you hurt yourself like this. You're out here doing fat supercharged wheelies on your H2s, doing stupid nooners on your Groms. If you just watched Yammy Noob right here, you keep watching it, you could save yourself from this. I can't keep watching you hurt yourself. I just can't. I can't keep, I can't do it anymore. Please keep watching Yammy Noob. I don't want you to hurt yourself, please.